What's going on everybody, C4 here, and we're back again with another free agency update. Now this was on the cusp of like, do I make a video, do I just keep it on Twitter? But I think because I've been a believer, I kind of pound on the table, if you will, for this player for the last couple seasons, I think it is worth making uh, a little bit of video. Talking about Quan Alexander, who just got paid, absolutely paid, from the San Francisco 49ers, four year 54 million dollar deal i know there's a lot of people thinking that they overpaid did they overpay probably but when you get a guy like quan alexander you're gambling on the upside he's 24 and you think that he can stay healthy he's a modern day nfl linebacker 6'1 230 pounds can cover can tackle all right definitely probably an area of his game that needs to improve he made a pro bowl for whatever that's worse but like he's one of those guys man every single year there's almost why i'm doing it every single year when we open up the madden game we look at the madden ratings i'm like how is quan alexander always in the 70s like, am I just missing it? Like, I don't watch a whole lot of Tampa Bay Bucks games. But when I do, and Quan Alexander's playing, he is all over the field, man. This guy here is, I think, in, in terms of not, not anymore because of this gigantic contract. But up until this point, I think he was one of the most underrated linebackers in the league. Now, needs to stay on the field. Has had some injury concerns. Only played a full 16 games once. He's been in the league four years. But when you look at his stats, he's essentially played three full seasons in the National Football League. In those three seasons, he has three interceptions. He has 22 pass deflections, six forced fumbles, seven sacks, almost 400 total tackles, 30-plus tackles for loss. Like, that is uber production. Now, is that to say that he's worth more now that the market's kind of reset? I think he's getting paid more than, like, Luke Keekley and something ridiculous like that. Absolutely not. But for a linebacker prospect, I'm going to be completely unbiased when I'm saying I probably would still put Quan Alexander ahead of my Jordan Hicks. Probably most likely at this point, a former Philadelphia Eagle. I probably put Quan number two behind CJ Mosley in, in terms of ranking the best linebackers available for this free agency period. And hey, I was kind of hoping before we start shuffling money around to get Malik Jackson and we, we re signed uh, Jason Peters, which is a nice deal for my Eagles. I was like, if we can't get Hicks, maybe Quan would be interesting. But then now seeing the money that he went for, um, you know, seems like maybe myself and Mr. John Lynch had the same kind of valuation on a Quan Alexander. And what does this mean for the San Francisco 49ers? Well, the Niners had a whole lot of salary cap. I still think they're going to be big-time players in Earl Thomas. Maybe this is the money that they may or may not have kind of been saving away for Antonio Brown, potentially before he just went over the, you know, I don't know how the geography works, but we'll just say over the bridge to Oakland. But what Quan Alexander is going to bring to the Niners defense is essentially cover for Reuben Foster. I mean, when you look at the Niners, you're like, all right, well, Reuben Foster coming off that rookie year, looks like he's going to be like the next great linebacker that the 49ers were going to have in the lines of, I mean, I guess you could say Chris Borland for one year, but much more so Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. And, it, you know, it didn't really work out. Obviously, they had the off the field. Now it's kind of looking like a pain in the ass because they got rid of him because the off the field that got retracted, I guess, from his girlfriend. And now uh, the Washington Redskins got him on a budget type contract. Like, you know, it could be a potential steal for the Redskins and a big loss for the 49ers if, if you know, Ruin Fox doesn't end up missing any time. Obviously, from a locker room standpoint, you know, the shit wins have consistently followed and, and the clouds have, have loomed over Ruben Foster's head. So maybe it was better to wash their hands now. But, I mean, you got Fred Warner, 2018, third-round pick at a BYU. He got, you know, really good production. I'm going to guess maybe you get Malcolm Smith's ugly contract off the books and then you can have uh, Quan play in that will role or move Fred Warner to that will role uh, and have Quan play as the, as the middle linebacker. But, I mean, it's a linebacking core. When you look at the 49ers that had a lot of money to spend, I think for sure they should have been in play for a linebacker, and a guy like Quan Alexander really does complete that group for the most part. And uh, like I said, man, you got Malcolm Smith, who hasn't really lived up to expectations, the former Super Bowl MVP. They got him from the Raiders. And I actually just pulled the contract. Ugh, not that good. You'd free up like a million bucks by getting rid of Malcolm Smith. So he's probably going to stay on the roster. But, um, I mean, they, they have they have enough money. They have enough money anyways to just be spent. They, I think they had like 50 some million dollars worth of salary cap. So, bringing in Quan Alexander, you're still going to have enough room to make a play, like I think, for Earl Thomas. I think if you can bring in Quan Alexander, you bring in Earl Thomas, maybe you look at improving uh, potentially the interior of that offensive line. Maybe look at a corner. I mean, you still got the draft. You're going to have top three pick, most likely. Uh, you know, unless they trade down at number two, probably Nick Bosa will fall to you there. You're just going to be able to complete the team. Maybe you can get creative, move Eric Armstrong to D-tackle. If not, look at their cap right now. Clear cut, a free, just $9 million off the books by moving Eric Armstead. So, I mean, they have a lot of flexibility. But ultimately, just given a review, I think, you know, personally, just because on the channel here, I've always said, Quan Alexander, I'm a believer of him. He constantly gets underrated. 
thought I thought we'd give them some props and say, this is a good move for the 49ers. I know there's actually a decent amount of 49er fans that watch my content. And I think this was a get. Don't be necessarily afraid with the, the bigger number for a guy that maybe not have you know, been on your radar a whole lot. But I, I you know, I, I'll tell you this, one of two things. One, this contract still does not take you out of play for Earl Thomas, which I think should be the big get here for the Niners. And two, if he can stay healthy, which I guess kind of is a big if, I think Quan Alexander has that, you know, pro, he's Pro Bowl potential. I mean, for what, like whatever, whatever that means nowadays, because Pro Bowl is just a glorified uh, celebrity popularity contest, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, it still represents for the most part talented playmakers. I think Quan Alexander's just at that level, and I think him and Fred Warner is a very intriguing linebacking core heading into the season. So there we go, Quan Alexander. We talked a little bit about Jason Peters. I think um, Trent Brown got paid a lot. I mean, I like seeing my Florida Gators get paid. I like Mike Mayock. Really ugly contract, Trent Brown, like 66 million. He's the highest paid tackle in football. That's all you need to know. That is absolutely ridiculous. But that is for another video where we finish out the free agent class. I guess for the linebackers, though, where's Jordan Hicks going to go? Where is C.J. Mosley going to go? I'm sure we'll get my reaction on those signings when they happen. Hopefully, Jordan Hicks tests the market. It's not that great and decides to come back to Philadelphia on a one-year prove-it deal. And then you can't leave out Anthony Barr, who looks like I think the rumors were saying that he might go to the uh, the Miami Dolphins. And you got Justin Houston, who just got released. Jamie Collins got released from the Browns. But we'll probably just you know come back and talk about Anthony Barr, C.J. Mosley, and Jordan Hicks. So while we're at it, give me your predictions. Where do you think C.J. Mosley, Jordan Hicks, and Anthony Barr are going to go on it? Well, we're on the subject of linebackers. But that is it for me today, guys. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until the next big free agency signing, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.